Welcome back to the series. Today, Ray will be discussing photonic LiDAR technologies and how they have contributed to the move towards autonomous vehicles. So Ray, what will you be talking to us about today? Today, Victoria, I'm going to be talking about how recent advances in photonics, specifically in LiDAR, have played a major role in the move towards autonomous, that is driverless or self-driving, vehicles on our roads. In particular, Hamamatsu Photonics have been leading this technology for many years now, and I shall detail some of those developments. That does sound a somewhat daunting prospect of driverless vehicles on our roads. Can you provide some reassurance, please? Certainly. First of all, full automation is still not quite here today on a mass scale. But to understand the path towards full self-driving vehicles, it's useful to know that there are six levels of autonomous driving. This goes from no automation, level zero, where the driver is in complete control at all times, to various degrees of automation, such as cruise control and control of the vehicle speed and lane position on motorways, automated driver assistance systems or ADAS. Level 5 refers to full self-driving under all conditions, without a human driver or occupants, automated vehicles or AVs. In fact, we're steadily moving in that direction. For example, last year, California granted licenses to some seven companies to enable full autonomous vehicles to operate on roads in San Jose, with a posted speed limit of 45 miles per hour or less. By 2032, we can expect 5 million robotic vehicles on the road. And by 2045, 70% of all vehicles sold could be integrated with autonomous capabilities. A final food for thought is that humans are by far the weakest link in the safety system chain in the car. We are responsible for 94% of all collisions. What technologies are implemented into these autonomous vehicles to ensure safety and control? As you can imagine, there are many complementary technologies that are and can be used. These include one, more simple ultrasonic sensors that harness sound waves for measuring short distances like those used in parking sensors. Two, radar sensors. These use radio waves to build up a picture that works well at night and under adverse weather conditions like fog or rain, but suffers from poor resolution. Three, cameras. They provide good colour, contrast and resolution, but suffer from poor dynamic range. And four, LIDAR, an acronym light detection and ranging that uses photonic technology to measure the distance of an object from the source and can also be used to build up a 2D or 3D image of the scene. The key strength of LIDAR to highlight is that it provides both a high image quality, like from a camera, while also bringing the nighttime performance and ranging abilities of radar. Is LiDAR technology new and why is it all the rage in autonomous vehicles? The basic concept of LiDAR is not new. In fact, it's been around since the 1930s when meteorologists used it to measure the height of clouds. Then, from the 1970s, NASA scientists used this technology in its development of exploratory spacecraft. And today, you may have used handheld rangefinders when playing golf or when hunting. Both use the LiDAR principle. However, as you can appreciate, with advances in photonic technology, such as developments of higher pulsed sub-nanosecond lasers and more sensitive detectors are now available at more affordable pricing required for the car industry, this has then opened up avenues for their use in automotive LiDAR applications where distances of up to hundreds of metres can be measured from a LiDAR system. They can be integrated in the headlamp, in the vehicle's fascia, or simply located behind the windshield. This, coupled with advances in powerful in-vehicle processors, allows vast quantities of data produced to be analysed quickly, efficiently and safely using state-of-the-art algorithms. LiDAR does sound like a really interesting technology. Can you tell me how it works? Of course I can, Victoria. Essentially, 
A pulse light source, typically a laser, illuminates a scene and the light reflected by the object in the scene is then detected by a photodetector. As only a small amount of light reaches the receiver, so a sensor detector is required. A microcomputer inside the LiDAR sensor then measures the time it takes for each reflected beam of light to travel to and from the object and then onto the photodetector. As we know the speed of light, we can easily measure the distance. Each reflected beam is sensed by the LiDAR as a point with an associated distance. Many clusters of points are then built up to give an accurate 3D measurement. This particular common LiDAR technique is known as TOF, Time of Flight LiDAR. What's more, there are different types of TOF LiDAR available. Some systems use motors or even 2D MEMS mirrors to raster scan over a 2D area. And then there are systems that scan but have no moving parts. The OPA, Optical Phase Array, LiDAR. Here, the OPA steers the laser beams through various types of optical phase modulators. And as the speed of light is changed by these modulators, this then allows control of the steering angle without the need of moving parts. And finally, there is flash LiDAR that is scanless, whereby the whole scene is illuminated at once by the laser and the flash LiDAR essentially behaves as a camera. Flash LiDAR uses a 2D array of photodiodes to capture the laser returns, which are finally processed to form 3D point clouds. In an autonomous vehicle, then there will be different types of LiDAR implemented to ensure the best coverage. The mechanical and MEMS-based LiDAR have the longest range, whereas the OPA and flash LiDAR have the widest field of view. What wavelengths are generally used in automotive LiDAR? There are two different wavelengths that are commonly used, 905 nanometers and 1550 nanometers. Today, operation at 905 nanometers is more widely used, as short pulse laser diodes and Vixel array sources and silicon-based photodetectors are readily available at this wavelength. However, there is a limit to the amount of laser power that can be used whilst remaining human eye safe if a range of over around 200 meters is required. On the other hand, by operating at a wavelength of 1550 nanometers using fiber lasers and in-gas based detectors, this is at an eye safe power and as such, the LiDAR can be operated at longer range, at distances of over 200 meters. However, the components are more expensive and the water absorptions are stronger at 1550 nanometers, meaning that care must be taken whilst operating in the rain, snow, fog. So can you tell me a bit more about the photonic products that are used in LiDAR operating at 905 nanometers or 1550 nanometers? Well, the sources and photodetectors used depend on the type of automotive LiDAR. Hamamatsu Photonics manufacture and supply all kinds of photonic devices for automotive LiDAR. As I mentioned earlier, for the longest range of hundreds of meters used in mechanical and MEMS-based LiDAR, then a very sensitive silicon MPPC, multi-fixel photon counting, or single photon counting avalanche diode, or SPAD, are used, which have intrinsic gains of a million, or, for 1550 nanometers, an in-gas avalanche photodiode is generally used. For shorter ranges of a few meters, then a silicon pin will suffice, and for intermediate distances, Silicon avalanche detectors are typically used at a gain of 100. These detectors can be either single element or consist of linear arrays of detector elements. As sources, then pulse laser diodes of high pulse durations of nanoseconds allow a higher distance resolution to be obtained. Peak powers can be over 100 watts at 905 nanometers. For flash LiDAR, then a 2D silicon avalanche photodiode or a 2D CMOS distance image sensor are generally used, with the source commonly being a Vixel array. Can Hamamatsu offer specific products optimised for automotive LiDAR? The simple answer is yes. There are many design challenges that must be overcome to tailor individual components for automotive LiDAR. For example, for the detector, its photosensitivity, its noise, response rate, dynamic range, gain uniformity, level of crosstalk, reliability, its ability to work under ambient light and over a wide temperature range are just some of the fundamental factors that must be considered by Hamamatsu's design engineers. A so-called hybrid device can be supplied 
This consists of the detector along with an on-chip bandpass filter designed for transmission of 905 nanometer radiation only, along with an integrated transimpedance amplifier that will reduce the overall noise. Furthermore, Hamamatsu can provide ASIC, application-specific integrated circuits for the detector that are specifically optimised for LiDAR. And finally, the products can be qualified to automotive industry standards. So there seems to be a bright future for automotive LiDAR. Absolutely, Victoria. The industry forecasts that automotive LiDAR will grow to nearly 18 million units by 2025, with revenue growing to $5.4 billion by 2030. This is from a 500 million revenue today. And Hamamatsu is primed for supplying such innovative and optimised sources and detectors qualified for the automotive LiDAR market. Please do contact your local Hamamatsu sales office to discuss further and we very much look forward to hearing from you.